Hello and welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. We look forward to spending the next 30 minutes with you as we venture into the third week of November. <laughs> wow. Thanksgiving is next week, guys. Yeah, looking forward to it. And that means Christmas is right around the corner, and I bet Mark already has his decorations up and ready to go, right? And, and it's Christmas is it, music all around the house. Is it after Thanksgiving? <laughs> Christmas tree doesn't maybe, go up till after Thanksgiving. That should, that should be a law. <laughs> it's worse enough we've got Christmas commercials right after the election cycle ended. We got the Christmas commercials. Some radio stations are already going with the Christmas music 24/7 already. Let's have some time to enjoy wow. November and some time to be thankful for the Thanksgiving season. Yes, it's a rant. Uh, I wouldn't call this a rant. I have to make a confession though. I do have Christmas type things up. We have our lights but do, up. Do you have them up year round or you just put them <laughs> out for November? That is my confession. About July, I looked in my living room and thought, oh, that's a nativity scene. <laughs> and all life. of my snowmen. And so then I thought, well, what does we snowmen got to have October. To do with Christmas? See, that's all the more reason to keep them up year round. I was thinking of Siberia all year. So <laughs> we, we put our lights up. It was a couple Mondays ago, it was 60 degrees out. So we were outside. The kids have you turned the them place. on though? We have, yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you can probably see them out your window more. <laughs> <laughs> well, in all seriousness, this week is the week for gift giving, right, Mark? Absolutely. Operation Christmas Child. Shoebox Week has finally come. We'll tell you more about that later in the show. Love that season. Also today, a very inspirational story about local cancer survivor Missy Gandy. And it's food day. I hear a rumor that I'm going to learn how to make I know how to eat pie, but I will learn how to make if and, teach, and can I eat it too? If can you I eat teach, the pie? If you t show a person how to fish, but if you teach a person how to fish, they can fish forever. So we're going to teach you how to make a pie. So you're going to teach them how to make pie forever. That's really a good health choice. Thank you. You know, it is a good health choice in your life. It is to read the Bible every day forever, and that's where we're going to go right now. Yeah, our scripture for today comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1-5. through 5. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be holy, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Well, the message of spiritual milk and the importance of moving past this stage of being an infant in Christ, just part of the powerful messages brought to the Lima area last week. Worldwide pastor and evangelist David Ravenhill spent four days at New Life Assembly of God here in Lima. TV44 had the opportunity to be involved in one of these events. His resume includes assignments in New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, New York City, and Arkansas, just to name a few. David Ravenhill, son of the late Leonard Ravenhill, who grew up being influenced by individuals like A.W. Tozer, spent four days in Lima earlier this month for the same reason he spent years all over the world, to preach the gospel and share the life-changing message of Jesus Christ. New Life Assembly of God in Lima was host for Ravenhill's visit to Lima, an opportunity for those in this region to hear four challenging, biblically driven messages. Am I prepared to allow God to have his reign in my life, to rule over my finances, rule over my time, my affections, my desires, all of those things, am I prepared that he takes the throne of my life? From Genesis to Revelation, Ravenhill uses poignant scriptures to send the message that God wants his children to grow and that growth must include abiding by the scriptures. Well, I mean, I think the compromise in the church is the thing that would trouble me the most, you know, just lowering the standards and, uh, you know, I liken it to a, a student going to a professor the first year of college and saying, what's the bare minimum I need to get do to get by your class? I don't want to ace it in any way. I just want to make sure I get a passing grade. You know, we've got that attitude with God. You know, I want to make sure I get through the pearly gates. Don't want to go to hell, but, you know, take me any further. It's important to get back to the Word. We need to get, we've got a lot of, we got a lot of good things, but we don't have the thing. We need the Word of God brought back. We need the message, the simple message of the good news, the gospel. Christ calls us to give. You see it evidenced in churches like New Life Assembly of God and is also the theme of the holiday season, of course. Well, TV44 is in the middle of our annual pledge campaign and we're so thankful for your partnership 
as we plan for 2015. Now, as part of that campaign, TV44 is participating in Giving Tuesday. It's coming up on December 2nd. As God gave to us with the gift of His Son, Giving Tuesday is an opportunity to give to others. You'll be hearing more about Giving Tuesday here on TV44. In the meantime, we've got a short video to tell you why Giving Tuesday is important. At Thanksgiving, many of us reflect on the good people and things we have in our lives. We pause to rest, reflect, and take care of our families and friends. But after the consumer holidays of Black Friday and Cyber Monday, many of us are also taking the opportunity to turn that gratitude into a tangible act on Giving Tuesday, a worldwide effort promoting charitable donations on the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. It's a day to spread the word about doing good for others and take responsibility to do some of that good ourselves. By participating in Giving Tuesday, you'll join a movement that can be of enormous benefit to the organizations doing work that you care most about. So this Thanksgiving, spend time with the ones you love, and on Giving Tuesday, share a little love by giving a gift to help your favorite charity fulfill its important mission. Giving Tuesday, your chance to give back. Well, stay tuned to hear more about Giving Tuesday in the days and weeks to come. Well, before we get to Giving Tuesday, we first have to have Thanksgiving a time of family togetherness, thankfulness, and food. But for more and more people, eating a traditional Thanksgiving dinner is getting tougher due to food allergies. One thing that is found at so many Thanksgiving dinner tables is pumpkin pie. But with the increasing number of indiv individuals facing dairy and gluten allergies, pumpkin pie can quickly become a mouth-watering no-no. Today we come to your rescue with a pumpkin pie recipe that is gluten and dairy free. And joining me to do so, our usual, Test <laughs> gerbils, is that what it is? Test, Test gerbils. No, I, I have to confess that I'm not big into the gluten and dairy-free uh, lifestyle yet. Well, I, I don't think Do that. they taste good? Something we share in common is I believe your wife eats the gluten-free. She, she's starting, thing. yeah. She's starting yeah. the gluten-free and so does my wife. And so we can learn something together. We're here bonding, today. Zach. <laughs> what we are today, I have one of my wife's recipes All right. for the pumpkin pie filling that is dairy and gluten-free. but. Um, also, one of our experts today is Jennifer, who does the pie crust gluten-free. So we're going to combine them for a really awesome pumpkin pie recipe. That's right. It is going to be really awesome. It's the first step in your mind. <laughs> does it you taste like prepared peach pie? To eat it. It does not. But before not we get there, you know what? You have a job to do. What is it? Very Tell me. important. It's called to... rolling out the crust. Now, right. I already went ahead and pre prepared this crust. And you can see the ingredients on our website, WTLW.com. Um, two cups of gluten-free flour, half a cup of palm shortening or coconut oil, one egg, half teaspoon of the salt, two teaspoons of sugar, which is optional. Huh. Before you get to the water, you have to do the first part. You have to get the, uh, the shortening. You can use a, a pastry dough thing. You can use a fork. You're sharpening your roller? We can talk more about that <laughs> later, because what's important is getting it rolled out. I put the water in. It's all ready to go. And here we have the equivalent of two pie oh, really? crusts. This okay. is two, so it'd be a top and a bottom or a top or bottom. Now one thing about this being gluten and dairy free is I discovered that it's a little bit um, moister. So the recipe that I used recommended rolling it out in between two pieces of wax paper. Do you want to try this, Zach? Oh, you so you sure. Put the paper on All right. So you're going to put two rolling pins here. You're going to do it with two rolling pins. Now, well, that's interesting. now you can use the special Tupperware uh, mat that I got from Don Brown, who Ooh. is a viewer. Hello, Don. This will give you an idea of how large you want to make. I do it or Zach? We're both going to do it. Why not? Oh, because there's I've got one two one rolling there. pins. One says Grace and one says Abby. Well, I, I wonder I if you can roll double quickly. So here you go. It's pretty basic. Pretty simple. Yep. How's it going? I'm making a you look wolf. like you've done that once or twice, Andy. Actually, I don't think I've ever done this. Really? Never in my life. You are a natural. Thank you. I was it's born to roll. Uh, mine's just scooting along. Here. It's not really rolling. Now, up. most times when you're rolling out a crust, I have never actually done it in between this wax paper before. But I like it, it works out pretty well when I tried it. I liked it. Mine's and kind of like an oblong shape. It doesn't really look you circular. You can fix like that. You, what can you crust? do now? Well, Move I mean, I'm just way. making a uniquely shaped pie. Now, now remember, pies guys, have to be a circle, you know? it needs to fit into here. I think that's the definition of a pie. <laughs> All oh. right, Andy, you're getting closer. Well, mine's not going to Let's move it along this way. No, here's your circle. You're trying to, to reach. Oh, that's the point of this thing. I wondered why there was a target underneath. <laughs> All right. I'm just kind of making, like, gonna... pita bread 
looking. You stuff. know, in the end, I've discovered I've made many, many pie crusts that look very ugly. But as long as they taste good, nobody seems to care. I don't like the crust. I would rather eat the filling and the topping, and then. That's going to change how, today. Uh, how thin? So how thin? You're, you're you confident in yourself. The thinner, the better, Andy. That's really thick. Oh, I thought we're, that was he's got a nice target. thin one over <laughs> here. He's beating you. He, his might make it Is in this before. This a race. Well, well, we have a filling to make. Zach we was right about so his prediction. This would take more than a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to point that out. When you have done it many times, it doesn't take it's very, very long. It's very sticky, though. Look All at right, that. All right, take a look. look. Okay, so now take off one of your layers. Okay. See, Ooh. It's, it's separating. Uh, oh, yeah. We may have to use yours and not his. I believe that you can learn this in time. Mine looks awfully interesting. Now, if you weren't using this wax paper, you'd be putting this on yourself. Um, so now need, you've got to peel off the wax paper. Can we like press it in first? To, it's like a fruit roll-up. You can press it in. Kinda. Now don't forget when you get the edges, you have to flute the edges. Ooh, what does that mean? Flute! Flute the edges with, your, jazz flute you're with your thumb and your finger so that it ends up looking something similar to this. Hey! Nice job, Zach. Thanks. Mine's All right, sticky. I think you guys are timer. interesting starters. But how about if we go ahead and make the ingredients? Well, yeah, do we have time to do the, the right? actual filling? Yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> All right, because I've got that covered over here for the gluten and dairy-free pumpkin pie filling. You see we have a variety of ingredients. We'll go through them real quickly, starting with one mashed banana. One cup one of pumpkin, Wait a second. of course. Wait a second. Oh, yes. What are we making? Oh, yes. This is pumpkin pie. One <laughs> cup Can you hand me that? of pumpkin you see there. Now, this is interesting. Look at the vanilla pudding mix there. And it's very important to note that this is the Jell-O brand pudding mix. Why? Because it's dairy-free with few ingredients uh, that are going to cause, or very few ingredients that are going to cause issues. And so, very important is here. Is there but, normally pudding and pumpkin well, pie? Well, no, but this is going to serve as your thickening, one of your thickening agents. I like um, it. This is one of the differences, but this is the gluten and dairy free we're after. So, continuing with the ingredients, we've got two eggs we're gonna throw violent in. Violent with that, that banana. Half a cup of unsweetened almond milk. Of course, there is sweetened almond milk, but this is half a cup of unsweetened. Yeah, this is in. important for all your dairy allergies out there. A teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, a quarter teaspoon of each cloves, and, um, well, cloves right there. So, what we'll get started here, you've already got it going. We've thrown all of those together in the bucket, and it looks like Andy's <laughs> doing do something the with them. Go ahead and do the eggs. Do. Now, you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees is what this is going to bake at. Very nice. Keep going. Whoops. Oh, stop. Don't, don't. What? Oh, my goodness. Who, shell. <laughs> Who put the eggshell in? <laughs> The little crunch is just a little extra, an extra That's right. bonus. I really now, if you want to see that. this recipe in its entirety, it is at cinderella.wordpress.com. That's where this recipe comes Cinderella from. Cinderella Cooks? This right. will also be on the WTLW website, so of course you can get the ingredients there. Find a link there as well. How's it coming, Andy? It looks eggy. It does look a bit eggy there. Jennifer's okay. going to put our spices in. This thing's throwing me off. What is this? Oh, I think you're supposed to actually use a real spoon. Probably to mix that it was, up. That there. was just something I brought. I don't even know if you weren't even supposed to use that. That was just me coming up with Is ideas. this even clean? Did you just pull it out of your <laughs> shed? It's like a he, tool. He's the expert, not me. How much was this on this again? What do you have there? The <laughs> nutmeg? Half we're a teaspoon. We're on the seventh <laughs> teaspoon of nutmeg. Okay. Is that too much? <laughs> it's a very nutmeggy. There, you can see it thickening okay, you up go, there. What did you say again? Cinderella cooks that. Wordpress.com. Of course, you can find a link at WTLW.com to get there. I'm not a nutmeg person. I don't like spices or anything that's... You know, you also were not a fruit person. I've always liked fruit. Or what? a vegetable what person. Kind of person. I'm still not a vegetable person. <laughs> what kind of person would you like define wings yourself and as? pizza. I'm, I'm with next you there. <laughs> we could do wings. Thanksgiving we wings. We could do wings. We have a couple different recipes for I wings. I did a deep fried good. turkey once. Oh, oh, that's pretty good. It was. It was interesting. It was. I was up, up in Alaska. It was 20 degrees below zero outside, and we had the deep fryer out there and had to relight it about seven times. Okay, is this ready to go in? It doesn't look ready. Well, it'll. It'll. We need to bake it. Okay. Okay. Oh, I can't eat that. <laughs> <laughs> won't. Okay. Here you go. <laughs> what is this for? Go ahead and put it in our nice. Go ahead and, and pretty, put it in. So there you see, fill one eight inch pie, pie shell. Uh, of course we have ours today. You're gonna bake that at your 350 degrees for around an hour and 15 minutes, maybe an hour and 20 minutes. You're gonna have, just take a look, depends on your oven of course, as Andy puts that in. But our final result here 
What if I have a wood stove? Is our gluten? <laughs> That's gonna be a whole nother animal entirety. Can I do it over a campfire? This is your gluten and dairy free <laughs> pumpkin pie. And believe me, this Thanksgiving, it smells really your good. Family members with those allergies are going to just jump for joy. They will be so thankful um, because you have prepared something that they can eat. Can I Who credit? doesn't like desserts? So of Please. course. Can we try it? Of course. I don't think we have any uh, plates here. Who Does that matter? Plates? No, do we have any utensils? That may matter. Who needs utensils? Oh, uh, you can we start, have Andy. Cream. <laughs> here we go. Oh, it's gets the absolute pie test. How is it? It's good for a pumpkin pie. <laughs> Wonderful. I don't like pumpkin pie. Well, there you have it. All of That's your allergy good. family members are, are going to be able to the eat vanilla pudding. dessert mm. this Thanksgiving. I like that. Go to WTLW to see this recipe and, of course, learn to make your own. We're going to throw it over to Dancy, who's got a special interview with someone who's went through some tough times but survived with God's help. Dancy. Well, we have a special guest joining us now, Missy Gandy, and Missy has quite the story to tell. Many of you are probably familiar with the uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul books that are out there. Well, we don't need that because we have Missy <laughs> joining us. And Missy, you um, have survived cancer. I have. And um, your story is remarkable. And um, let's go from maybe when you were first diagnosed, if okay. we could. Um, what your symptoms were, and then how your life just has taken off from there. It's it's definitely been crazy, yeah. but I found out in May of 2011 that I had rectal cancer and with vaginal involvement. But from there, it has actually been God yes. leading the way every step of the way. Yes. So were you feeling sick? No, I actually started bleeding rectally. Okay. I was on vacation with a friend from up here. Uh -huh. in Florida and it, so I went to my doctor and she sent me to the GI and he's the one that told me. And you had pain or no pain? No pain. I had no pain. Okay. And it just happened like that on your vacation? Um, I believe it, it did. Maybe okay. a little bit before. I can't really remember but yes, on vacation. Okay. Yeah. And then you were get, given the diagnosis, and did you ever in a million years think cancer would never, be part of your Never, never crossed my mind, not one time, no. And absolutely. how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 45. Okay. Yeah. So you're very young, and um, you were given this diagnosis, and, you know, I know that people who have been diagnosed with cancer will say that they are stunned, but that all of a sudden things happen really fast. You have so many decisions to make. I did, yeah. It was... It was crazy, but the first thing is I went to church and prayed. With my family had come down, my brother, my sister-in-law, my grandma, my cousin, and it was it was a wonderful thing. I, I it, you just felt peace. And don't you wonder how people survive their their hardest moments without prayer? I do, I do, because I wouldn't be here. I really don't believe I would be here if yeah. there if it wasn't for prayer. Yeah, because I, th I think you had said before camera started rolling that um, when they prayed for you, you did, you, fe you felt that sense of peace. But really, wouldn't you say that's when your healing began? I believe so. And even my brother, we were at my house in Memphis and he said, I don't think it will ever come back. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I remember those words. Yeah. And, and it was something internal that you felt with this piece? Oh, yeah, Did you feel it working Oh, I just physically? felt, yeah, just like a lifted, like, you know, a ton of bricks have been lifted off your shoulders. Yeah. It was definitely amazing. So then after that, um, you know, they gave you that, that will and the ability to go on to the next step. Then what was that next step? Um, I, went to, I went to treatment. I started my treatment. And then September 7th, 2011, that is when I actually had my, um, my surgeon called it an iceberg, my tumor removal. But before that, we went to church. It was a Wednesday, and we all, we, it's kind of in downtown Memphis, so we kind of cleaned up the area because that's what I did. And my family's like, what are you doing? You have to be to the hospital in a couple hours. I'm like, this is what we do on Wednesdays. We clean up around the church area. Doing and God's work. Doing God's work, that's right. And that's what we did. And then we went to the hospital, and I was supposed to be in surgery for eight and a half hours. I was in for five and a half. I was supposed to go to ICU. I did not go to ICU. I was supposed to be in the hospital for 10 to 21 days. I was in, I can't remember, it was either five or six nights. 
And then when I was out of the major surgery, I had no pain medication because I had no pain. No pain. That, in a, that alone is remarkable. Yeah, I mean, I'm cut from almost my breastbone to my pelvic bone, and then my ileostomy. I was either supposed to have an ileostomy or a colostomy for six to 18 months, and it was an ileostomy for three months, and no pain whatsoever. How about your physicians and, and the surgeons? Were they, were they faithful people as Absolutely. well? Absolutely. The GI who first did my colonoscopy, he called me at home, yeah. prayed with me, prayed after my surgery, oh. and actually just called maybe two months ago to see how I was doing. Definitely faith-filled, yes. And that alone gives you the, the, I mean, I would just think when they put you to sleep, that that gives you that oh, sense that peace. you're 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 covered. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I had a prayer list, and everybody or you know everybody signed up. And I'm sure people from up here prayed. Oh yes. You know, and yes. down there. But I have a list, and everybody prayed every half hour on the or on the hour every hour. And it was just yeah. just knowing that, I think gives you a peace. Absolutely, and that was in 2012. 2011. 2011. Mm -hmm. So then you've had your surgery. Um, you have um, you began the healing, the the real healing of of your body. Absolutely. Um, and how have things gone since then? Wonderfully, I ended up moving back here. This is where my family lives. Uh -huh. um, lived in the house that I actually grew up with my grandparents, and things have been. I work now at an animal hospital that I used to work at years ago and things couldn't have gone any better. I'm thankful every day that I'm here to raise my daughter and to, you know, tell about God's will. I try to tell my story. <laughs> to anyone, every, right? Anybody that will listen, I do, because yeah. I just want them to know that He is our healer. He's my healer and my physician. Yeah. He, what do you tell people, though, and, and this is the hard part, is, you know, there are people out there that don't survive. Absolutely. And that things don't go the way that they pray for. What does that mean, then, do you think? That it's in God's timing. And, I, you know, I'm thankful for my timing still left here. Mm -hmm. And I don't, all I can pray is that, you know, they have the courage and the strength. And I, you know, pray God's will. Mm -hmm. And... I just pray for them. Right. And that, that He walks with them Absolutely. as they go through their journey. Absolutely. He is with them every step of the way of that, I have no doubt. Yeah, definitely. Well, I hope you continue telling your story because it does, it gives us hope. And for those people out there that are, are struggling right now and trying to figure out, is this all real? Is, you know, am I alone or am I Absolutely not alone? Absolutely not alone. No. No, you are never alone. He right. goes before you. Yep. Before you, with you, behind you, That's right. all over, right? Absolutely. All right. Missy, thank you so very much for being with us, and God bless you. Thank you. Yeah. Back to you. Thank you, Dancy, and thank you, Missy, for sharing that testimony. Mm -hmm. We're so grateful for the way God has healed her. But you know what amazes me is the way, of course, I would expect her to be thankful, but the way she just has used that as an ongoing ministry what God has done to the healing. Yeah, what, what a wonderful disposition to, to have after going through something like that. Certainly an inspiration to others. Well, Zach is back. He's put away the cooking supplies, although the, the pie is still out here on the table. And he joins us with mm. an important announcement. Did you guys like a piece? Uh, I mean, can I have another one? I know you wanted to eat the whole pie. It's so. really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, the week is finally here. We've been telling you about it for weeks, encouraging you to pack toys, toothbrushes, and a lot of prayer. And this week is the week to bring your Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes to TV44. Do you have our, our example box with you, Zach? Well, you know, in fact, no, we do not because Jennifer's box is gone. Next week, we'll show, your video proof, show you video proof that is now in the beginning of steps to being sent overseas. Of course, Jennifer promised that that would be shipped away. That's exciting. And so we will we'll show you that. But uh, <laughs> some of my, you know, there were some very sentimental things from my daughters in that box. I really? had to determine whether I was going to actually gift it away or keep it. Well, here's a real question. Did you take out the candle and did you take out the chocolate chips that were not supposed to be in there? And the razor blades that you, oh no, never mind, never mind. No, of course I would not put, my goodness, Andy. People oh. need to shave. Children, Children need to shave? Well, maybe not. Well, anyway, here are the drop-off times <laughs> right here at TV44. Tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday, 10 to 5. Thursday, 10 to 7. Friday, again, 10 to 5. 
Saturday 10 to 1, and then still on Sunday 1 to 4. When you are coming to the TV station to drop off your shoe boxes this week, also plan to bring back your viewership survey if you haven't already sent it back by mail. Now last week all ongoing financial donors were mailed a postcard sized survey asking you a very basic question. Please let us know your TV setup. How do you watch TV 44? Options answers included antenna, satellite, satellite plus antenna, and cable. Now, if you already have this information from you, you don't need to mail in the survey. It's a short, quick question, but the data is very important to us. And if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call at 419-339-4444. Well, our annual fall campaign continues this week, and we are again so thankful for those of you who are partnering with us financially for the 2015 year. We certainly uh, have had some great responses already. Folks mm -hmm. that love TV 44, some of our different shows, and uh, Faith and Friends certainly comes up often as well, but some folks to thank here, Jennifer. We are very, very appreciative. Mrs. Dale Parrott of Van Wert, thank you for your generous individual gift. Mr. and Mrs. Charles Montgomery of Bluffton, thank you as well. And Ms. Eleanor Smith of Rushylvania. What a, what a, a generous monthly gift. Thank you very much. Certainly some gifts from Putnam County as well as the Schmitz from Ottawa with a monthly donation and also the Amstutz from Pandora with a one-time gift. Certainly you can have a monthly gift, a one-time gift. You can also set up a, an automatic withdrawal from your banking account. Our goal is $200,000 and so far we've got a little ways to go. I'm going to be honest with you. We're hovering around $16,000, $17,000 right now. So your partnership with us is something that we definitely appreciate. We're in this together to witness the living word throughout the region. Want some more information? We always welcome to give us any questions. Give us a call at 419-339-4444. Or look at the back of your campaign letter that was sent in the mail. That also gives you more information about that, uh, how you can be involved in the campaign. You can also email questions to the campaign by writing contact at WTLW.com. Well, that is going to wrap it up for our show today. We want to thank you for joining us so much. And while we're coming to an end today, we want to let you know that there is almost Faith and Friends birthday. Right. Instead of a birthday pie, we're going to turn one. We'd like to invite all the cupcake bakers to bake us some birthday cupcakes. That is huh? a great idea. That made him stop. Look at that. He stopped cutting when he heard cupcakes. So good. <laughs> Yes, we would love to hear from any of you cupcake bakers. We'll bring your cupcakes on. We'll say nice things about them. We promise this is not a <laughs> let's guess which one's better. It's just a Faith and Friends birthday cupcake party. Email us at faithandfriends at WTLW.com. I enjoy cupcakes, so that sounds like a, a grand plan. <laughs> Who doesn't enjoy Zach gives it two thumbs up. You know, I, I just had to contemplate that for a minute. I mean, cupcakes would definitely be a positive for our show. I've been wanting to do a cupcake decorating segment. See how maybe how tall we can put the frosting. I, I think don't that's know. a good idea. Does that determine how how you whip the frosting, the height of the frosting? Mm. How much air you get in it, you can build it up higher. Have to ask Zach. Well, yeah, we'll have to and, further uh, explore the cupcake <laughs> possibilities. But also don't forget about those viewer surveys and our annual pledge campaign. But we close now with the foundation on which our station stands. The scriptures. Andy. Better put my pie down. First <laughs> Peter, it's not my pie, it's everybody's. First Peter two, one through five. So put away all malice and all deceit and all hypocrisy and envy and all slander like newborn infants. Long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good as you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves like living stones are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. What a great passage of scripture. Just continue to, to move along on your journey one step closer to Jesus. Certainly something to be thankful for as we enter into the Thanksgiving season. We thank you for joining us tonight on Faith and Friends and we'll see you next time.